Hello, everybody. Yes. You kicking us off? Yep. Everybody ready? Yes. Cameras ready? Sound four. Good morning, everyone. My name is Usman Yaya, and I'm a sixth grade student at Bennett Middle School in Salisbury, Maryland. Welcome to the White House and Discovery Educations of the People series. We are live from Anacostia Library in Washington, D.C. with students from Kramer Middle School and Brightwood Education Campus. Yay! As well as students joining us online from around the world. Today, we have a very special guest with us, President of the United States. Welcome, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. What did you want to talk about with us today? Well, uh, we are in an outstanding library, part of the DC uh, library system. But uh, what I really want to talk about is how we can harness and, and, and take advantage of the amazing technological revolution that's taken place to help young people learn, to help young people succeed, uh, help young people uh, read, and uh, ultimately uh, help young people be able to get great jobs and start their own businesses and do great things. And so that's why uh, it's wonderful to be uh, with all the young people here today. And I want to, Usman, I want to thank you for thank you. being our, our host. Thank you. Uh, very cool young guy, by the way. You know, I've, I've had a, a conversation with him already, and, and uh, he's going to run a tight ship during our little town hall meeting here. Uh, two other people I want to uh, acknowledge, though. We've got uh, our uh, mayor of Washington, D.C., uh, Muriel Bowser, who's here. And we have the superintendent of schools for D uh, wa uh, Washington, D.C., uh, Kaya Henderson, is here. So uh, a while back, about a year and a half, two years ago, uh, we announced something called Connect Ed. And uh, the idea was pretty simple. Uh, it turned out that in most schools around the country, you know, people had a uh, connection to the internet. And there were computers in the classrooms. But a lot of times, you didn't have the kind of uh, connections and wireless and high speed uh, broadband that would allow you to pull up information really quick on the computer. Or if you were in class, you might have to uh, you know, wait in line to use all the computers. Uh, or uh, the teachers weren't plugged in as well as they needed to be. And so what we said was, well, we need to make sure that in all the schools in America, everybody's got a great internet connection and a wireless connection so that if you're studying astronomy and are learning about the planets, right away you can pull down pictures and uh, you know, information uh, that helps you learn. Uh, if you are learning world history and you want to know about ancient Egypt, uh, right away you can start looking at how the pyramids were built and, and read about that uh, and create uh, you know, presentations uh, off the internet. And so what we did was worked with a bunch of different people, uh, both uh, companies, private sector, uh, but also government and uh, the, what's called the FCC, uh, or the, uh, uh, this is the organization for the federal government that's in charge of making sure that phones and uh, smartphones and uh, television and all that stuff works properly. And we made a commitment that we would start putting billions of dollars into schools all around the country so that all the schools, 99% of the schools, would have high-speed internet connections. And we're well on track to do that. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. But you also have to uh, make sure that even if you've got a good internet connection, that we've got libraries and schools that are getting resources, especially around reading and around books. Mm -hmm. And I'm, a, I'm somebody that when I was young, I used to love libraries, used to love reading. I still love reading, but uh, these days, uh, the stuff I, I don't get uh, to read for fun as much as I do for my work. Um, and so I've got a couple of announcements today where we've got uh, some amazing organizations, uh, libraries from around the country, uh, the New York uh, uh, Public Library System in particular is uh, taking the lead on uh, some work, 
to make sure that working with book publishers, we're going to provide uh, millions of ebooks online so that they're available for uh, young people uh, who maybe don't have as many books at home, don't always uh, have access to uh, a full stock of uh, uh, reading materials. They're going to be able to get about $250 million worth of books uh, online. And we're also creating new uh, apps, new applications uh, that allow people to pull down more information and more books. And I just want to thank all the publishers who are making all these books available. And I want to thank uh, the libraries and the schools that are making all these uh, books available. What I'm also announcing is a drive to make sure that young people have a library card uh, in every city in America. And we've already got uh, 30 cities uh, and, and uh, library districts that are coming together uh, to make sure that everybody gets a free library card. Because ultimately, and this is the last point I'll make and then we'll go to questions. Uh, you know, all the young people here, I know you guys uh, are working hard in school, but how well you do over the long term is going to depend on uh, do you love reading? Do you love learning? Do you know how to find information? Do you know how to use that information? Uh, and you know, the way you learn to do that is, is uh, by reading a lot and uh, learning how to think about uh, the material that you're reading. And uh, you've got great teachers, but uh, you've got to not just do it in the classroom, you've got to do it in life, thinking about how you're constantly uh, getting more knowledge and more information. And in the internet age, the best way to do that is uh, making sure that you're plugged in. Uh, so uh, I'm really excited and thankful for the publishers, the libraries, the elected officials uh, who are participating in this. And uh, the most important people, though, to participate in it are students. So that's why I wanted to talk to them. All right, think, back to you. I think I already completely agree with you. And before we start, I think the president and libraries all deserve a round of applause for what they've done this year. Oh. So thousands and thousands of questions were submitted online, and our first question is from Mrs. Crook's second grade class at Pine Grove Elementary School in Alabama. They asked, as a child, um, did you enjoy reading? Well, you said you loved reading, so that question's done. And they also asked, if so, what type of books spark your ima uh, imagination and interest? That's a great question. Um, you know, when, when you're little, you read what your mom uh, you know, is reading to you or your dad's reading to you. Um, so probably the books I read weren't that different from what you guys were reading. I'm, like, I'm still a big Dr. Seuss fan. You know, I was, I was into that, the Sneetches and Horton and all that stuff. But then you, as, as you get older, you start making your own decisions about what uh, you want to read. Um, you know, I, w I was into uh, adventure stories. Mm -hmm. um, there was something called the Hardy Boys back, back in the day. Yeah, I know you guys don't read that try <laughs> anymore, but. Uh, and uh, books like Treasure Island, uh, which it was about pirates. And mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, later on, I started getting into things like uh, The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, mm -hmm. you know, which is still popular today. Mm -hmm. um, and then by the, you know, when I got to college, uh, when I got a little older, when I got into high school, then I started reading uh, uh, you know, some classic books that when you guys get to high school, you'll start reading. Things like uh, uh, you know, Of Mice and Men and uh, the Great Gatsby and things like that that, that uh, uh, are more uh, novels that focus on uh, you know, uh, adult experiences. But you know, I also enjoyed reading science books. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I loved reading about planets and dinosaurs. And, mm -hmm. uh, so so I, it was sort of a mixed bag. Uh, what do you like to read? Um. My favorite series has to be Alex Rider series, if you've heard of those. What, what are they called? Alex Rider. I, I, I haven't. What, I feel, what's it about? It's about um, a boy whose parents um, uh, passed away in a plane crash. Uh -huh. And he lives with his grandfather, I mean his uncle. And his uncle one day um, dies in a car accident. 
And later did you know that all his family worked in M16 and the CIA. So it's a really good storyline in oh, okay. every book. He always has like secret gadgets and there's okay. always something he has to do. So he becomes like a, like a young spy? Pretty much. Well, that's pretty cool. I could lend you some books if you need I, I might, I might borrow them. Yeah. They, they sound pretty interesting. And to make you feel younger, my best friend read Treasure Island. Well, that does make me feel better. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> and, you know, like the Harry Potter books were pretty cool too. I, I, I read those to Malia starting when she was around five. And we read the, all the way through, uh, all of them. Uh, I think we finished when she was about 13, maybe 12. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that was just a taste of some online questions. You want to ask the I audience? I do. I want to ask the audience. Uh, who's got a question? This young man right here. What's your name? I'm Daryl. Oh, Daryl, hold on a second. We're going to get a mic so everybody can hear you. Mr. President, when you were young in high school, my question is, what did you study in school? Well, you know, uh, what grade are you in? Seventh. You were in seventh grade? So, uh, you know, probably the things I studied aren't that different from what you studied. Um, yeah, you had math and science and English and social studies. Um, and we, uh, you know, we had art and music, which sometimes is forgotten about, but is really important too, uh, because, uh, you know, you learn a lot through the arts. Uh, but by the time I was in seventh grade, I guess I was doing, I was doing algebra, I think, in seventh grade. Um, and I don't remember what our math was. Uh, when I got to high school, and the same thing will happen to you guys, uh, you know, you'll start studying the same subject matter, but it'll be a little more intense. You start getting a little more homework. Um, uh, so instead of just social studies generally about how the U.S. government works, they might have you study the Civil War and Abraham Lincoln and how uh, you know, that war ended up shaping America and you know, how it affected race relations when the slaves were freed and uh, you know, you know, what happened uh, in the South to, when segregation came back. So you know, you'll, you'll study the same things, but you'll just kind of go deeper into it. Um, but uh, do you have a favorite subject that you like? Science? science? Yeah. So in science, there, there are all kinds of different types of science. And typically, uh, when you get to high school, you'll do some chemistry, you'll do some biology, you might do uh, some physics. Um, and one of the things we're really trying to encourage is more young people studying math and science. Uh, because we live in, in a technological age, and you've got to know a little bit about math and science. Not everybody's going to be an engineer, but everybody should know sort of the basics of how the world works and how, you know, if you're using a smartphone, you know, how does that work? Uh, and you may decide at some point that you want to program uh, and create your own apps uh, on a smartphone. And, and particularly for the young ladies here, I want you guys to make sure that you uh, look at math and science because sometimes uh, young women aren't going into some of those areas like math and science as much, uh, and they should. It's not because they don't know how to do it. It's because sometimes they're discouraged, bec uh, the idea being that somehow that's traditionally more of a boy thing. and that's something that we got to get rid of. I always tell Malia and Sasha, you know, I want boys and girls studying all the subjects and getting good at all the subjects. You don't want to, you don't want to get pushed aside just because you're a girl. Mm -hmm. All right? Remember that. Um, speaking about how people around the world um, are like women and boys and girls, they all have to like learn science and math. A question from Nolan at Westridge Middle School in Texas. He asked, why is it important for kids across the country and the world to have access to electronic books and not only paper comics? Well, I, you know, I love traditional books, right? So you know, we're here in the library. and you know, I still, when I have a book that I love, I love turning the pages and reading it. And when I was a kid, when I was reading, you know, sometimes I'd write and take notes in the margins. And I still have old books where I could see things I underlined. Uh, it reminds me of 
you know, how you learn. Uh, but you know, the truth of the matter is we live in a digital age. Um, how many people here have a, have a smartphone? Right? So uh, a lot of you do. And, and uh, if you don't have one now, you're going to probably get one at some point. Um, and so you're texting all day, and you're looking at Vines, and Instagrams, and uh, you know, you're looking at like Grumpy Cat or some video of your favorite you know, singer, rapper. Um, and so more and more information is coming through mm -hmm. in digital form. And uh, what that means is, is that uh, we want to make sure that that becomes a tool, not just for entertainment, not just for talking to your friends, but also for learning. And the good thing about ebooks is that it's really easy to carry. You, you don't have to have a, li a library full of books in your house to be able to suddenly have access to every book in the world, potentially. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, for a lot of people, in, uh, they may live in a home where they don't have a lot of books. Books can be expensive. You know, your parents may not be able to afford buying a whole lot of books. But if we're able to set up because of these publishers mm -hmm. and because of the library system, uh, a, a way in which people can pull all these books down just through the internet, suddenly the, you know, that can even things out between poor kids and rich kids. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got the ability to learn. Everybody's got to have, you know, have access uh, to information. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing I got to say, though, is we're really proud of what we're doing to ex make technology available to kids everywhere. But ultimately, you still have to have a hunger for learning in order to learn. You've know, you got to want to learn. You've got to be curious and interested in how does the world work, or you know, you know, who is Shakespeare, or you know, why is it that um, the Earth rotates around the sun. You, you've got to be interested in those things and want to learn in order to learn. You can have the nicest computer in the world and the best books in the world, but if you're lazy and sitting around just playing video games and not really interested in it, well, you're probably not going to be a great student. And if you are curious and interested in learning, you're going to make sure that you figure out a way to learn no matter what. So we want to make sure that you have the best technology and the best information. But ultimately, the most powerful engine for learning is between your ears you know, and, and, and the attitude that you have about learning. I think attitude and using your brain is really important. And I think the audience, just listening to what you're saying about how ebooks are important and how regular books, they sort of change how people think of each other between rich and poor kids. So I think the audience might want to ask you something about why this is happening and why that might be. OK, well, let's see what, uh, what kind of questions we got. Young lady right here, what's your name? Jayla. Hey, Jayla. What inspired you to be president? You know, uh, I'll tell you, Jayla, uh, how old are you? You're 12. When I was 12, I didn't want to be president. Uh, I think when I was 12, I was thinking about, first I wanted to be an architect for a while and build, build buildings, which I thought would be design buildings. I thought that would be uh, really interesting. Um, and then for a while, I thought I was going to be a basketball player. But I wasn't that good. I was pretty good. You know, I played in high school, but I wasn't going to be good enough to play pro basketball. Um, then I thought about being a lawyer, and I did end up becoming a lawyer. But I think it wasn't until I was in college that I really started thinking about what I want to do with my life. And I realized that the people who really inspired me were people who were giving something back to the community or making the neighborhood better. Uh, and I was really inspired by the Civil Rights Movement. A lot of people have heard about Dr. King and 
They, you guys in school see the I have a dream speech. And, you know, that's, that's all important. And Dr. King was uh, one of our greatest leaders of all time. But the reason that the Civil Rights Movement worked so that uh, we ended segregation and people could go to school together and, you know, sit at a lunch counter together and uh, segregation eventually uh, went away was because of the work of all kinds of ordinary people. You know, nurses and bus drivers and maids, you know, who started marching and they met in churches and they, uh, you know, let, uh, let the country know that they were being treated unfairly mm -hmm. uh, and, and showed the, the world and the country that everybody should be treated with dignity and respect. Uh, and you shouldn't be judged based on your race. Uh, and, and I was really inspired by that. So I thought to myself, well, how can I do that kind of work? And that's, that's the work that I did uh, before I even went to law school and got a law degree. And in some ways, that's how I got into uh, politics and eventually being an elected leader was trying to figure out how I can be helpful to people. Um, and the good news is that you don't have to be a politician to help people. You know, there are a lot of people here in this neighborhood who are teachers, and that helps a lot of people. You probably have a teacher who's really an inspiring teacher. You like her, uh, you know, that teacher, and they're making you uh, try harder and learn more. And well, that's a an incredible contribution. You know, you might have somebody who's working in a church and helping to feed homeless people. Uh, maybe helping them get housing. That's really important. So that's what inspired me. And then it turned out I was, you know, pretty good at it. Pretty good at it. And eventually uh, I had the, the opportunity to, to run for president. Um, but I, you know, I'm, I'll be done being president in a couple of years, and I'll still be a pretty young man, not, not compared to you guys, but I'll still be pretty young. And uh, so I'll, I'll go back to doing the kinds of work that I was doing before. Um, just trying to find ways to help people, help young people get educations and help uh, people get jobs and try to uh, you know, bring businesses into neighborhoods that uh, don't have enough businesses. And mm -hmm. you know, that, that's the kind of work that I really love to do. Um, and also before we get another question from the audience, I was, since you're talking about people do, like doing what they want to be, how you started out being an architect, or you wanted to be an architect and you were a lawyer than a president, and how like it's never too old to be something that you want to, a little birdie told me that you were an author and you wrote a book. I wrote two books. Did you talk about that to them? Well, I, uh, you know, uh, I wrote my first book was about me growing up and what my life was like, and um, you know, my dad left when I was very young. So I never really knew my father. Uh, and I was raised basically by my mom and my grandparents. And so my first book was uh, a, me telling my story about how I, uh, how, how I made sense of the world not knowing my dad. And then eventually kind of tracing back and finding out who my father was and what had happened to him. Because uh, he had come from Kenya, that's where I got my yeah, uh, my name from, and uh, and so that was kind of a real personal book. And then the second book I wrote was more about some of the issues that I was working on when I was a U.S. senator. Mm -hmm. um, and I also wrote a children's book uh, while I was uh, doing that. Mm -hmm. That was about great American heroes. Uh, so that wasn't about me. <laughs> um, but I love writing. I don't have as much time to write as I used to. And since our audience is so big, not only here, online, and around the world, one of our students from Golden Oak um, Montessori in California, Danica, she asked, what is your favorite way to get rid of writer's block? And explaining that, just talk about what is writer's block. Well, everybody's had writer's block. So you get an assignment from your teacher. He says, uh, I want you to write a one-page essay about what you did last summer. Mm -hmm. So you sit there 
and there's a piece of paper, and you got your pencil or your pen, and you're sitting there, and then you say, I don't know what to write about. I don't know what to say. That's writer's block. Uh, and there's only one way to overcome writer's block. What do you, what, what do you think of this? Anybody got an idea? What do you do when you, come, when you got writer's block? What do you do? Well, that's interesting. So there's the idea of reading, reading books to give you ideas. That's one way of doing it. You, so you just sit there and brainstorm. You kind of think about, okay, what, what uh, ideas might be interesting. Um, anybody else? Yeah. What's your name? Oh, let's get a mic on you. I want to, I want to. What's your name? Paula. Hi, Paula. Are, are you 12 as well? No, I'm 13. 13. Yeah, what I do is I listen to music. Yeah? What, does it matter what music it is? Or? No, it doesn't matter. Really yeah, so it, but it kind of loosens things up a little bit, makes you a little more relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, well, I think, the, you know, so those are all good strategies. Um, but ultimately, the one way to get through writer's block is to just write something. I mean, the reason you get writer's block is because you're trying to write something really good. But I don't know if your teachers have sometimes told you that sometimes the best thing to do is just to start putting some things on paper, even if it's not good. But at least it makes you kind of get going. That, it's not as intimidating if the page isn't blank, right? If you've already got something on paper, you can just kind of scratch out ideas and you know, uh, write down anything that comes to your mind. And then you can sit back, maybe listen to some music, take a break, take a look at it and see, OK, which one of these ideas I had are good. And then you can start outlining it. And, um, but it take, look, I still get writer's block sometimes. Sometimes I have to write speeches, you know, big speeches, and I, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, well, I don't know what I want to say. <laughs> or sometimes I know what, to, what I want to say, but I don't know how to say it or how to start it, right? Um, so you, but you can't be afraid of that. You just, uh, a lot of times the reason people get blocked is because they're worried that what I'm going to do is not going to be that good. Well, nothing is very good the first time you do it. You know, your first draft, is, everybody here has been learning how to, uh, you know, in your English classes, that you write drafts, right? You, 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 you try something, you write it the first time. Listen, uh, even the best writers, usually it's not that good the first time they write it. Yeah, and I think you sort of covered everything about that question. Okay, you think, I, you think I've just kind of, <laughs> most mom thinks I've been talking too long. No, no, I think you just... No, well, let's move it along. <laughs> I got you. So, um, speaking of writing and how... Uh, I know who here has written something in the past month in their reading class? Okay, I think everybody's hands be... I, I wrote something in the last month in my reading class. Okay. And um, I think some students here in the back maybe might have a question on, like, how you get started and just, like, how books are going to help them in life later on in their writing skills. Well, why, why don't I just, uh, uh, somebody have a question or uh, a thought about how reading is affecting them? I'd be interested in that. Or they could tell me how uh, technology in your classroom and computers, how you're using them. Are, are there problems in your classroom sometimes with not having enough uh, resources and, and connections? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd just be interested in how you guys are using technology and reading in schools. So, huh? Were you, did you have your hand up earlier? Yeah? No? I thought you did. Okay, this young man right here? Good. Introduce yourself. Oh, um, I'm Antoine. Antoine? Um, the way I use technology in my um, art classes, uh -huh. um, sometimes I get um, art block a lot because I stress out because I'm just thinking about how I'm going to do it. And I'm, I have it in my head, but I just can't put it on paper sometimes. Right. So. Um, some things that I do is like I ask my teachers, can I um, like use their computers uh -huh. to like just look up random things about art and art, different styles. Well, that's interesting. So the uh, uh, so you might you know pull up some painting by Picasso or something, or you yeah. might look at some uh, graphic design, and it would just kind of help you get going. 
yeah, and inspire you a little bit. Yeah. The uh, do you want to, do you want to be an artist when you get older? Yes. Yeah. The uh, what do you like? All kinds of different art, R drawing, painting, uh, mm -hmm. sculpture. Or do you there's particular kinds of art you like to do? Um, for right now, I'm just working on um, drawing. Just drawing. Well, that's the base. That's the base for uh, a lot of art that you can do later. Mm -hmm. the, uh, anybody else want to talk about sort of how they're using technology in the classroom? Or the, uh, I'm, I'm going. Uh, you've been talking some good, and, and I really appreciate it. This young lady right here. What's your name? Oh, Hold on one second. Uh, let's get get a mic so we can all hear you. My name is Sheree. Sheree. In, in our school, we have something called the blended learning model. Okay. Like for 30 minutes of the day, we're on our computers on Brain Honey, like working at our own individual pace. Right. And for the other 30 minutes, we're talking with our teachers and getting other information on the topic we're on in Brain Honey. Okay. And and that's is that are you using that for all your different topics, math, science, yes. English, and 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 uh, how when you're doing individual study. Are you working with that computer uh, the whole time? They're doing most of the work on the computer? Yeah, don't mostly work in different projects. Like for computer class, we type PowerPoints, and sometimes, uh, sometimes we'll start using Excel. Uh huh. And like in math class, we'll like um, it'll have like visuals of what we're learning and things right. like that. That's great. And is there a computer for every uh, a student? Yes. Okay, so you don't have to like wait and use it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's a great example, thank you. And, and that's exactly why we want to make sure every school is able to do just what you described. Because um, the, 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 the good thing about having computers and this kind of model of learning that you just described is if you're just sitting there and somebody's just doing all the talking, that can be boring sometimes, right? But if you're there doing problems and projects yourself and then you talk to the teacher about the things you've done, as, and then you talk as a group, it keeps you more engaged, keeps you more interested. Okay. Um, if anyone has the last question they any, want to ask. Uh, any other questions? Yes. yes. What's your, what, hold on a second. Let's get, get, get a microphone. Hello, Mr. President. My name is Mulligetta. Uh I have one question for you. Go ahead. Uh, actually, two. All right. What's your favorite subject? Uh -huh. And what's uh, and what subject were you best at? That's interesting. Um, when I was your age, I was actually best at math and science. Um, but as I got older, the subjects I loved the most were English and history. So uh, I, I, uh, I still enjoyed math and science, but I loved hearing about other people's stories. You know, I loved hearing about uh, how people lived, what happened, um, and uh, I liked reading about it in fictional form, in novels, but I also liked um, reading about what actually happened in history. Uh, and, and that's why by the time I got to college I ended up uh, majoring in political science, but it really, a lot of that was history and uh, you know how government worked uh, and then I had a minor in English so you know I, I, uh, I ended up reading a lot of uh, books as well uh, fiction what's your favorite subject social studies okay well we're sort of on the same wavelength huh anybody else have have a last question this young lady I'll, I'll you, you get the last question here we go What's your name? My, my name's Hannah. Hey, Hannah. What kind of technology did you have when you were in school? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> when I was in school, we had pencils. <laughs> <laughs> and we had pens, and we had some colored markers, <laughs> and erasers, scissors. <laughs> we had rulers, staplers. Uh, no, I'm, I'm serious. I, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't even really use calculators that much until I was pretty far along in college, or, or in high school. And nobody had a computer uh, in school. Um, so 
by the time you got to high school, you had to learn how to type. And you would start typing your papers. And typing was a hassle. Because first of all, you had to learn how to type so you weren't just going one letter at a time. And then once you learned how to do that, you'd still make some mistakes. And then you'd have to get this thing called white out, <laughs> which was like this little liquid that you'd kind of cross out the letter. And then you'd have to wait till it dries and you'd blow on it. And then you'd type again. Uh, and then sometimes you got a tape that you could slip in there, but it, that was hard to do. Um, and so all through college, I had to type stuff. Um, and, if you, and, and you'd have to figure out like where the margins were at the bottom. Uh, and if you're trying to do footnotes, it, you'd have to guess where you needed to stop. The whole thing was a hat. Sometimes it took you longer to type the paper than to write the paper. Um, and you know you didn't have uh, you didn't have books online or articles online, so you had to go into the library and you'd have to get big stacks of books. If you were doing a report or a project, you'd have to you'd have a big stack of books like this. You'd have to carry them home, and then you'd have to remember to return them on time. Otherwise, you'd get fined. Uh, so you guys don't even know how good you got it. Um, I, 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 my first computer, I didn't get until uh, until I was at law school. I didn't get to use a computer. I didn't own one, but we that was the first time that I was using computers. I was I was twenty. I was 27, 28 years old before uh, I was regularly using a computer. And I didn't own my own computer until I was, I, yeah, I take that back. I, I guess I was about 26, 25, 26 is when I started using a computer and, and actually was able to buy one. So that just shows you, you know, how much more information you have at your fingertips and how much faster you can learn than old people like me. But you got to take advantage of it. Remember what I said. We're going to make sure that every school has computers and every school has uh, the kind of internet uh, connections so you can pull up stuff fast. Um, and, and you guys are part of a generation that can learn more faster and get information from around the world better than anybody in human history. You've got more information available on your phone than the great scholars of the past had in the biggest libraries in the world. You've got more just right there in that phone you got in your little back pocket. But you've still got to take advantage of it. You've still got to want to learn. You've got to want to read and, and be curious. And if you do, you guys are going to be incredible leaders in the future. All right. Really proud of you. Thank you for the excellent questions. Everybody give Usman a big round of applause. Yeah. His outstanding hosting. And now his turn. Thank you very much. You did Thank a great you. job. Thank you. If you have right. final words you want to say? No, I just want to say uh, you guys are great. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing great things out of you. And for everybody who participated digitally, Thank you for uh, being a part of this. Well, um, Mr. President, on behalf of Discovery Education, thank you for coming out today with us. And answers to any questions that we didn't get to will be on discoveryeducation.com slash of the people. And an archive of today's video, if your friends didn't get to see it, will be on that link also. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Good job.